We're in chapter 15. I'll read to you tonight. This is a moment where Jesus feeds 4,000. I'm going to show you a couple of things in here. I'm going to take my seat. Then Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I have compassion on the crowd because they have been with me now three days and have nothing to eat. And I am unwilling to send them away hungry, lest they faint on the way. And the disciples said to him, Where are we to get enough bread in such a desolate place to feed so great a crowd? And Jesus said to them, How many loaves do you have? They said, Seven, and a few small fish. And directed the crowd to sit down on the ground. He took the seven loaves and the fish. And having given thanks, he broke them and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowd. And they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up seven baskets full of leftovers. I mean, excuse me, it says broken pieces leftovers. There were leftovers. Seven baskets of leftovers, y'all. Those who ate were 4,000 men besides women and children. And after sending away the crowds, he got into the boat and went to the region of Magna. Vision plus mission equals change. I want to show you something in this passage. This is the second time in about four or five days that Jesus fed a big crowd. If you go back to chapter 14, you see that he fed 5,000. And what's, what I find funny about this is when they give the number, that's just the number of men. So they haven't even counted the women and the children. So when it says he fed 5,000 four or so days ago, it was probably more like seven or 8,000. And when he feeds 4,000 here, it's probably like six or 7,000. And the funny thing is, Jesus says, you know, I have compassion the crowd because they have been with me now three days. And they haven't eaten. Well, how does he know that they haven't eaten in three days? But the last time they ate, he fed. So part of the challenge here, Jesus' finish is that those of us who choose to follow him shall have every provision they need. Jesus' finish is that those folks who choose to follow him will have every provision they need. He said that, that, that I will, through my father now, because my father has all the riches in heaven, that I will provide everything that you need. So he has these folks following him, and he's feeding them. I want to show you this thing about mission. Mission is the way that we operationalize vision. We have Jesus' vision. His vision is that those who follow him should not go without him. How does he operationalize this? Well, the first thing that he does is he assembles a team of folks. When you put your vision together and you begin to operationalize, don't forget that no person accomplishes great deeds by themselves. God created us to be relational, which means that we need each other, which is why we've accepted the, the challenge to be a community of love, to come together and challenge ourselves to learn how to love one another, to support one another, to encourage one another, to inspire one another. You cannot accomplish your goal by yourself. Even Jesus, God, only begotten Son, needed a little help. So he calls the disciples to him. I want to pause here and say that in your endeavors, you need to put together a personal board of directors, board of life. As you think through what life means to you, what you want to accomplish in life, you need to put together a, a, a group of folks who will pray with you and who will hold you accountable to what you say you want to do. Then if you're like me, I like to pull folks who, who are a little higher on the ladder than me, who are a little better than I am, because part of their accountability system on me is to help challenge me to move to greater heights. You can't push me to greater heights if you're not there already. So Jesus pulls together a team, a board of advice. 
situation out there? Well, how many provisions do we have? How many folks are out there? What, what, what do we need? What, what's the issue out there? So Jesus assesses the situation. Now what I want to challenge you to think about here is the vision is what is necessary for you to create your goals, your objectives. The vision is what you need in order to suggest to folks what it is. Last week we talked about with the, the passage in Habakkuk, where, where, where the prophet says, write the vision, write it big letters, and hold it up so everybody who sees you will have a clear understanding of what you're about and what you're trying to do. Jesus here moves forward with a mission. You can't move forward if you don't know what you're dealing with. You can't drive down the road if you don't have an understanding of what is down the road. What tires do you need to use? What kind of car do you need? So Jesus assesses what the situation is. How much food are we short? What, what are we missing? And then I love this part. If you were with us the first couple of weeks of the congregation, you would know our preacher's sermon that was about getting ready for the breakthrough. And we said, when you have your back against the wall, and it seems like everything is, is out for you, it seems like you just can't catch a break, you should pause, breathe, and thank God for all the people and the situations and the things that are in your life. Be grateful. When, when your back is against the wall, and it seems like you can't get a win, it seems like everybody's against you, and it's always your fault. Stop. Breathe. And be grateful. I love this passage. Jesus has thousands of people in front of him. He pulls the 12 close to him. He, 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 he assesses what's going on. And then he pauses. Then he breathes. The scripture says he gave thanks. He found the reason to be grateful. I wish I could pause right there. Y'all know. We get down and out. Work situations get out of hand. Friends get out of hand. Family, 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 family. Get out of hand. And we just want to lose it. But the pastor says, pause. people who 